Hello, everybody. It's the coach. This is Madden 20 on EA Sports. Straight ahead, we've got what should be an interesting matchup between the Los Angeles Rams and the Indianapolis Colts. With that, let's get on up to Lucas Oil Stadium in Indianapolis. For the call, we bring in our broadcasters, Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, Coach, thank you very much. It's the National Football League presented by EA Sports. Just as we were ready for air, it was the Colts emerging from the locker room to great fanfare here in Indy. They're ready to go as the Colts get set to match up with the Los Angeles Rams. Brandon Gunn and Charles Davis with you from our broadcast perch. And Charles, as we get this thing started, what are you going to be keeping your eye on? Special teams. Field position is always a big determiner in a ball game. Who sets their offense up for success the best? That team will win the game. Here's the punter, Rigoberto Sanchez, on to get us started. And we are underway here on EA Sports. This one fielded at the five. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. So out come the Rams now for their first possession. They'll be led out by their quarterback, the guy out of California, the former Cal Bear, Jared Goff. While in college, quarterback teams that improved their win total from one his freshman year, to five his sophomore year, to eight his junior year. Love that type of improvement. Love that type of diligence. They go play action with Gurley, now gone. It's hauled in by Brandon Cooks. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. 16 yards on the game's first play and a quick first down. I think it all came together there. In breaking route, drove it with excellent pace. Money throw right there to move the sticks. Took just one play to move all the way to the 44 as they try again on first down. Here's the first carry now for Todd Gurley. And he's going to take this one across midfield and into Colts territory. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves him with a second and three. The success there, Charles, coming on the outside of the field, the ground game. Curious to see if that continues as we progress. Yeah, we often talk about a variety in play calling, and usually between run and pass. But in this case, with strictly the run game, you can be creative there as well. Run it inside, run it outside, keep the defense off balance. And he'll be taken down at the 44-yard line. Four yards the pickup, first down. So many teams want to throw the ball in this situation nowadays, but I love watching a team that has enough confidence to go ahead and run the football in that situation. That's almost a tendency breaker. Watch the pass. Delayed give, Goff to Gurley. And he takes it down to the 40 with a pickup of four. The headshots here are the offensive unit. And what about Brandon Cooks? If he's not a 1,000-yard receiver every year he's healthy in the league, I'll be surprised. Came out of college wanting to be a pro, studied all the best receivers in the NFL before he even got to the league. The run got four. Now they deal with a second and six. A play fake to Gurley, now gone. Open man, Higby, the tight end. And he gets Check this it. to the 35, good for a gain of five. That catch good for five, it's third down. And let's go through the starting defense for Indianapolis. Justin Houston is an elite edge pass rusher, and he has the speed to get upfield quickly, and offensive tackles have to respect that. 
but also he has great hands. Ability to get their hands away from his body and then make a move either inside or outside to get to the quarterback. For the Colts, an extra defensive back in there now on third down. Now gone. This is caught. It's Cooks. And they'll get him to the ground. He has another first down at the Colts 24-yard line. Nice job keeping that opening drive alive. And they're in plus territory, that part of the field where you really want to convert on third down. They did. Big time pickup for them. And now I think the aggressive play callers think to themselves, this part of the field, I take my shot at the end zone. Because the closer you get to the end zone, the field can, gets condensed. Makes it a lot tougher to run those routes. You still got a chance to actually run past people right now. Take your shot at the end zone early in the down and distance count. On first down, it's Gurley. And not much. Maybe a yard down to the 23. Well, we just saw a great example of what we talked about with his coach prior to the game. He's definitely one of the better linebackers at reading a play and flowing to make the stop before it turns into something big. The run only got a yard. Here's second and nine. They'll fake the handoff. Now Goff. Under a heavy rush and down he goes. The linebacker Darius Leonard applied the heat. Enough to start to have a good drive. Quite like a big loss on a sack, does it? No, now they're looking at a third and long, and suddenly the momentum shifted to the other side of the football. And old Mo is a very, very fickle man. So Goff, he'll try to refocus after the sack. The Rams now set up with a tough one, a third and long. Out of the gun, Goff. And this is going to be incomplete. As my dad used to tell me all the time, when you're going ready to play a big-time game, especially when you have one going into a dome setting, Better strap it up tight because that crowd can really affect things. Especially on third downs like the one we just saw there with the incompletion. So on fourth down, here comes Greg Zerline to try and get three for the Rams. It'll be a 49-yard attempt from the left hash. And this one is going to just tuck into the bottom left corner as he gets it to go. And the Rams have the first points here. It's 3-0. Able to move the ball on that drive. Yes, just three points, but four first downs were in there. Yeah, and you can look at it and feel pretty good about the whole thing and think, okay, this should continue throughout this ball game. On the flip side, if you're a defender, it's almost like whew, we only gave up three. They moved the ball on us pretty well. After the main field goal, Zerline back out there now to send this one away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. So the Colts now coming out for their opening drive. They'll be led out by their quarterback, a product of NC State. It's Jacoby Brissett. complete to Jack Doyle, the tight end. And they work this well upfield across the 45. Go. A good pick up there, 21 yards. I do believe we'll see a little bit more of this as this game progresses because when you can have that type of a game in the middle of the defense, it hurts them in so many ways because most teams like to be strong down the middle. And if you can sting them there, that open things up for you on the outside as well. But that's where he, their big tight end, is so good. That middle third, the seam routes, the in routes. Yeah, you're right. Probably see more of that. Yeah, it takes a lot of courage and fortitude to go in the middle as well. <laughs> and he's got it. 
A big hitter to start the drive has him up near midfield here for first and ten. They'll run it here. This is Marlon Mack. And no room to maneuver there. Give him a yard up to the 47. And we look now at the offense for Indianapolis. Brian Kelly is a great example of how valuable the centers have become in the NFL. A former first-round pick, he was plugged in immediately to be a starter to handle big nose tackles as well as blitzing linebackers and also able to move and get out into the run game and get to the second and third level and deliver blocks. Here's second and nine, just a yard on that last run. From the shotgun, it's Bissett. It's complete here to T.Y. Hilton. And he'll take this from 147-yard line to the other. A gain of six. One thing we do know, he's going to get his catches. So as they move forward defensively, got to continue to focus on not giving up the big play when he does catch the ball in the secondary. On the bootleg, it's Bissett. Finds his big tight end, Mo Alley Cox. And he's going to have the first down at about the 38. Nine yards on the pickup there, and it keeps the drive alive. Many different ways to create space, but on that play, he did it with that big, wide body of his. Didn't get a whole lot of yardage on the play, but it did what it was supposed to, pick up a first down. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. They'll run on first down with Marlon Mack. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. Well, you often say that sort of opens the playbook now, second and short. What do you think, early shot here? I like where you're going. Obviously, we've been together for a while, because you know me. I want to take that shot early and loosen things up. From the 31, Brissett. That's complete to Hines out of the backfield. Not able to get a single yard there, and it'll bring up third down. The defense here for the Rams. I got a kick out of talking last year with Aaron Donald about how when he came out of college, many NFL teams thought he might be undersized to play defensive tackle. Instead, he's been a perennial all-pro, Pro Bowl player since day one, and offenses are still searching for ways to block him and keep him from disrupting their offense. They had the catch on second down, but it didn't help at all, and now they're looking at third down here. Brissett now. Ebron's got it. And it's a fumble. And now the Rams have got it. Going the other way. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. The psychology of the game never ceases to amaze me because you would think there would never be a fumble from what we hear from coaches all the time, right? And how much they practice not fumbling. Practice it, preach it, talk about it all the time. You would think no one would ever turn it over. Yet they are humans out there running around, and we just saw another one. Opportunistic by the defense. Here's a Los Angeles offense as they get set to take possession. And they're not going to play this conservative, I don't think. They had the field goal last time, and they're up, but they're looking to put a drive in the end zone. Oh, I agree with you totally. No one goes out on the field and says, all right, let's just settle for three, except in certain situations, trying to ice a game, that sort of deal. Most of the time, it's end zone, and that's what you're thinking, and I believe that's exactly what they're thinking as they begin this one. Yeah, no quarterback ever goes out there saying, hey, let's get three, right? right. <laughs> Not one that I've ever met. Brissett going to lead his guys up first and 10. And he's a perfect 5-for-5 five five here to begin the game. They'll run on first down. It's Mack. And brought down, but not before they get it inside the 10 to the 7. It's a nice pickup of 12 yards, and it gives him a first and goal. 
We often give credit to the O-line. Their two tight end formation, those tight ends block pretty well also. Yeah, that's one of the most dynamic positions in football now. The tight ends who can block at the line of scrimmage at the point of attack, and they can also get downfield and catch the football. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. On plays like this when the ball comes free, it's often unusual for the team that lost it to get it back because this is, this is the quarterback. The ball gets away from him. Everyone else is trying to execute what they're supposed to do on offense. They're usually looking in the other direction, downfield, or have moved away from him. In this case, though, a teammate is able to come up with the ball. First down, a bit of a disaster, and now on second and goal, back even further. Here's Bissett. It's caught by Funches. They'll wind up getting seven on the completion, but they'll still be faced now with a third and goal situation. It's now third and goal. It'll definitely be a disappointment to come out of this starting position with just three points. They need to try to dial something up now, third and ten. To throw is Brissett. To the end zone, but it's incomplete. It's a great job by this secondary. When I watch them, they remind me of elite defenders on a basketball court, right? They want to contest each and every pass. Great contest on third down to bring up fourth. So with fourth down coming up, here's Adam Vinatieri now for the Colts field goal. And Vinatieri's kick is good. And that will tie us at 3-3. So the drive stalls out inside the 15-yard line, but they do get three. And I've talked with enough players nowadays that when they have these types of kicks, that no one says to their guy, hey, that's just like making an extra point, piece of cake. Because the extra point is not a piece of cake anymore. <laughs> but kicking a field goal from that distance, just give him confidence and let him knock it through. Field goals, all we've had so far. 3-3 now as the kick is away. Fielded about a yard deep. And this return nets positive as he gets past the 25 and up to the 27-yard line. And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. And after the field goal last time, let's see what they can get here. At least they got points out of the last drive, Charles. I never met an offensive coach that didn't want a drive to end with a kick. <laughs> Most of them wanted to end with a PAT, right? In this case, a field goal, they'll take it way better than the alternative, which is a punt. Yeah, but you met fan bases that wanted that, <laughs> that weren't happy with that field goal. <laughs> I haven't met a fan base yet that wants a drive to end with a kick <laughs> other than the extra point. That's it. <laughs> they'll start out here with a jet sweep. And he's going to get hit at the line of scrimmage and driven backwards. Danico Autry is in on the stop. I'm not sure that you'd call it a trick play, but it definitely showed some imagination there. I wouldn't be surprised if they want to come back and show this play a few more times before this one is over. Looking to throw on second down. Golf gets this into the hands of the tight end Higby. That catch good for five. It's third down. Let's not quibble about the game there on second down. That was a positive play because that was a take-what-you-can-guess situation. Got out to the tight end. Now it gives them a much better opportunity to convert on third down. The last play on the completion got them half of what they needed. Now here's a tough third and five. A shotgun snap for gone. He gets it to Cooks. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. First down, Los Angeles there with a pickup of 14 yards. 
Would it be safe to say that as precise as routes are supposed to be run in the NFL, maybe they're not quite as precise in college ball? That's accurate, yeah. And I think we saw a college route in the NFL there. Just find the soft spot, find the dead zone, and find the first down. And that's what he just did. Here we go tonight. Ready? 15, check by 15. Come on, baby. Let's see what you got. On first down, gone. Throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. He was in search of his tight end, Tyler Higby. And that'll bring up second down. I think he's a little trigger happy right there. And it turned into an ill-advised throw into their zone. Well, we know he has confidence. He'll throw it any place, any time, anywhere. That time it fell incomplete. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Throwing again is gone. It's a short one here, complete to his tight end. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. Let's just break this down and make it pretty simple. Key to the drag route, letting the play develop, finding the hole in the defense, and giving your athlete, yes, athlete, a chance to make something happen once he has the ball in his hands. They face a third and four after that last completion gets him six. Goff throwing again. Going up top for Cup. This is caught inside the 15. Touchdown, L.A. Cooper Cup, 48 yards. And the Rams have taken the lead. So on third and medium, they dial up the pass, and it works to hit the end zone. And it's really not a surprise to me. That's a throwing down in the NFL because of how tough it is to run the football. But what offenses like to do is still show run formations to make them respect it and throw out of those. In this case, they took a nice shot at the end zone and made it pay off. Zerline good with a PAT. And the lead is now 10 to 3. So the drive there took six plays. And the result for the Rams a touchdown. Now after the touchdown, it's Zerline. He'll kick it away. That's fielded in the end zone. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. Here comes the Indianapolis offense now as they get set to take over. And they had three points last time, but they didn't want three points because they were well within range of scoring a touchdown. We'll see if they can do better now. I'm with you on that one. Let's just go ahead and be frank about the whole thing. The only one happy about the three-point? The kicker. Exactly. <laughs> he put it through the post. That's going to help him at contract time. But that offense, they're thinking, let's get in the end zone this time. I don't know if that helped him at contract time. You, you could have kicked that one through. I don't know about that. <laughs> <Toe bash. laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> Super toe. It's our time. It's our time. Check 37. Check 37. A run by Mack to start the drive. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. Give the Colts 13 yards in a first down. Getting the sense, Charles, are going to put a big emphasis this afternoon on the run game. And why not? What we're seeing so far, it's working pretty well from them. And here's the best part. We always talk about the best performers do their job when the lights come on. I think he likes natural light best. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Let's go one more. On first down, they'll stay with Mack on the ground. And that one goes for about six as he's taken down just shy of the 45. All right, Brad, I know we're in the early going here, but those kind of runs, they're going to open up a world of opportunities for this offense going forward. From the 44, the set. He's got it to Hilton. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. That's good for an Indianapolis first down on a gain of 10. 
This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh so effective. Nice completion there. Keeps the sticks moving. So from Rams territory now, it's first and 10 at the 46. Brissett sets to throw it, and that's incomplete. Eric Ebron, the big tight end, is intended target. That'll bring up second down. He released that awkwardly. It almost looked like a pitcher who gripped his fastball a little too hard and let it go late, and it bounced in front of the plate. Yeah, one of those fastballs that ends up at 57 feet, not 60 feet, 6 inches. Just a little short with the arm, which is unusual because we saw him in warm-ups. He's got a big, strong arm when he delivers it with confidence. Throwing again on second and 10. Brissett, that'll be caught by Rodgers. I know many people like to throw to the tight end, maybe in a little flexed out position because he creates mismatches with his size. But slot receivers do the same thing with their quickness, their speed, and their route running savvy. And now on third down, they'll need to get it to the 36 to pick up the first. And in the air once more, it's Brissett. And he gets it to Funches complete. And a nice gain at 21 yards. Set now, 9 of 11 passing of this first half. He's got his guys a first and 10. Off the play fake, here's Brissett. He's going to take off with it. He'll get eight on the scramble there. It'll be second and a couple. And we have to give credit to him for buying time and extending the play. But you know, there's some really upset defenders on that one. They thought that they had him. Instead, he was coated in Teflon and got away. Quick throw here to Hilton. No gain that time on the completion, and it'll be third down. Ten three, our score after one here on EA Sports. The Colts on third down. They've been okay, two for three thus far. Here it's third and two. They'll try and run for this with Mack. Well, they hit him in the backfield, and he will not escape. And that is not going to get it done. The defense stiffens to force fourth down following that first down gain of eight. Perfectly designed blitz right there. They took that one from the grease board to the field because they were able to free up their linebacker to get into the backfield and spill the play. So out comes the field goal team now for the second time here today. A 31-yard attempt. Vinatieri's kick is good. And that'll bring him back within four. No problems in the field goal department so far. He's two for two. Pretty reliable here in this game, isn't he? And to me, that bodes well for them. If they need him late in the game, his confidence should be sky high. to just four as they kick it away and turn things over to their D. This is taken at the three. They'll bring it back to just about the 25, call it the 24-yard line. 
Getting set to go again here on offense. Jared Goff trots back onto the field. He's played a pretty clean first half. A touchdown, no interceptions. Frankly, that's what they expect out of it. They want to see the ball thrown and thrown well, and he's able to do that and put it in the end zone. They'd love to see more of that before this game finishes. But right now, he's got his team in a good spot. A good spot. Maybe looking for touchdown pass number two here in the second quarter. Golf will lead the Rams up here first and 10 at their own 24. They'll start out on the ground with Gurley. And some room to maneuver. A big run there by Gurley. 44 yards on the ground. Nothing fancy there. A little smash mouth football right up the gut on the dive, and it turns into a huge play. You talk about the fastest way to the secondary. Right up the gut, as you described, and sprinted into the secondary for a long, long run. So the big play changes the complexion of things. Here's first and 10 just outside the 30. They go play action with Gurley. Now golf. Then he'll find his target. Woods, it's complete. And down inside the 15 he goes. It'll be a first down for the Rams there on a pickup of 18. So there on that play, offensively, they ran the crossing route. Defense was in zone coverage. So as a former DB, how tough is it to defend that? It's really difficult because your natural inclination is to chase the receiver and maybe leave your zone. So you have to have discipline in order to talk to your other coverage guys and let them know that that receiver is crossing from your zone to the next zone. He's coming your way. Make sure you have him. And then when the ball is actually thrown, secure the tackle. When they're moving on crossing routes, if you miss a tackle, it usually results in a big play. Back to throw. Gone. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. So they escape, so to speak, maintaining the football. Defensively, though, opportunity miss. It definitely was because that's all defenses talk about, getting the football and either advancing it the other way or just getting possession and turning it over to their offense. That can be a little bit deflating. You're exactly right, a lost opportunity. Work to be done here on second and 16 after the sack. From the gun, here's Goff. He's going to dump it off to Gurley. And he'll get into the end zone. Touchdown, Rams. From 19 yards away. And the Rams tack on to their advantage. How about that touchdown, partner? If you blinked, you probably missed it. I looked away for just a second, and they were in the end zone. Now Zerline on to add the extra point. It's good, and now it's an 11-point lead, 17-6. The drive summary, four plays, 75 yards. And it winds up with a touchdown for Los Angeles. Now after the touchdown, it's Zerline. He'll kick it away. Fielded about a yard deep. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. Now on the return here, we've got an injured player down there. We'll check on his status when we get back.
The Indy offense at the line and set to go. Now they're about to come up on drive number four, but so far just two field goals on drives one through three. Wondering if the head coach has talked to his offense coordinator and said, look, let's, let's go ahead and press this a little bit. I'm giving you four downs on just about every occasion to try and get this offense kick-started and have it culminate in touchdowns. You know, maybe someday I'll press it a little bit. This might be the case. From up near the 40 now after the big play to start, here's another first and 10. Out of the gun, here's a give to Mack. And this play will be blown up. He'll lose yardage back at the 38. That's going to go as a loss of one on first down. That was shades of Tennessee volunteer football back in the 80s with Charles Davis coming up from the secondary to make the tackle for a loss. You mean my teammates doing that, right? <laughs> because they would tell you, my coach would say, where's that tape? I want to see that. But how about the complete package there? Not just playing the pass, but being a willing tackler and making a really nice play. On second and 11 now. Brissett, Ebron caught left side. That throw good for only a couple. It brings up third down. Well, they're unable to convert that into much, but it's never a bad idea to try to get the ball into a tight end of his caliber's hands and see what kind of disruption he can cause. The Colts on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This is third and nine. From the gun, here's Bissett. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Aaron Donald able to get in there for his second sack of the afternoon. Now, that was just absolute perfect man coverage. Nowhere for them to go with the football led to a sack. And that's really difficult to do in today's NFL with all these gazelles running around that you're trying to cover in the secondary. To punt on fourth down, here's Rigoberto Sanchez. JoJo Natson back deep for the Rams. And that hits at the six and carries into the end zone for a touchback. Todd Gurley and the Rams offense set to take over. We're in the second quarter. They've got the lead. The lead, though, not so much because of the ground game, because of their air attack, Charles. So what they're seeing so far is the possibility of things loosening up later in the ground game. Through the air first, maybe they have to start respecting that even more as the game goes on, and then there will be running lanes to find later. Yeah, try to get him more involved here on this drive, maybe. Golf will lead the Rams up here, first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. Quickly from Goff to Cup. And he goes nowhere. He'll lose yardage back at the 17. Call it a full three yards in the wrong direction there. Brings up second down. Now that was well defended. And as a cornerback, what you're taught when you see a wide receiver screen, either you get underneath the play before the blocking forms, or you're going to have to fight your way through it by getting through some blocking. That was a really nice play there. So now they have to contend with second and 13 after the first down run goes backwards. Out of the gun, gone. And that's complete to Cooks. A gain there of 21 yards. Huh? 
So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Now Goff will hand this one to Gurley. And he's going to be stopped up quickly here. Just a yard up to the 39. Brandon, one thing about blitzes, they really confuse offensive linemen at times. And what you have to do is lock in on the guy right in front of you. If you don't, you saw the end result. Defensive tackle end up making the play. Like 20, 50. All day, just like that. Just like that. A play fake to Gurley. Now gone. And that one goes incomplete. He's maybe lucky it wasn't a fumble as he got hit as he threw it. One of the great coaches said football is really a simple game. Rush theirs, protect yours. And he's talking about those guys throwing the football. In this situation, the rush won, hitting the quarterback and forcing him into an incompletion. The Rams on third down. They've been good. Three for four thus far. This is third and nine. Golf. And got him. Woods. First down Los Angeles there with a pickup of 14 yards. Territory. Here's a first and 10 at the 47. Goff now looking to throw. And Woods has it complete. Second and five after the five yard completion on first down. Goff going to hand it to Gurley. And here he'll be brought down a little shy of the 35 at the 36. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. And a nice little broken tackle run there by Todd Gurley, the 10th pick in the 2015 draft. And that's what you get with him, that full package of speed, power, able to catch the ball in the backfield. Many people doubted him coming out because of the knee injury in college. <laughs> We're seeing the full time Gurley now, and it hurts. Meanwhile, Goff to Gurley as he drops it off for his running back. It's a four-yard pickup, and that'll make this a second down. Everyone's got to be able to catch the football. Doesn't matter what position you play, but if you're on offense, be aware, a ball may come your way. A four-receiver set here. Three to the left, one to the right, second and six. They'll fake the handoff. Now Goff. This is caught. It's Cooks. And they'll get him to the ground. He has another first down at the Colts 14. And with that completion, he's now north of 200 yards here in the first half. Boy, a tough start for the secondary defensively. It is, and it's got to put a dent in their confidence. And, you know, you always want to keep that up and feel like you can always bounce back after plays. But with the kind of numbers he's putting up here, it's starting to wear on them a little bit, I think. So they're looking at each other and trying to figure out what defense will work and how can they play better without getting beat deep for big passes. Goff now over 200 yards already in this first half. It's first and 10. From the red zone now, Goff. Rush coming, and he's taken down. It was Justin Houston, the native of Statesboro, Georgia, with a sack. And plays like that really hurt play calling. They had a really nice gain on the previous play, but gave about half the yardage back on the sack. Excellent pressure up front. Nowhere to go with the football. Down he goes. Sacks, a growing theme in this first half. This is second and long. Goff turns and gives to Gurley. And he'll get him inside the 15 down to the 14-yard line. It's a six-yard pickup to get him back to the original line of scrimmage with third down coming up. 
And that looked like some pretty easy yardage there right up the gut. And he's a guy that has some height to him. So when you don't have to drop a shoulder or create or get through contact or trash, makes it a lot easier to stay upright, see the field, and make a run as we just saw there. Goff now looks to throw. The Colts D sticking to their assignments, and that brings up fourth. That is the first time that they've targeted him that he has not come down with a catch. He's caught everything that's been thrown his way. A dominant pass receiver that can break down any defense because when he's doing that kind of work, it really hurts you on the back end. And even though it's an incompletion there, I think they're going back to that well. So out comes the field goal team now for the second time here today. Zerline's kick is up and through. And that will get the lead up to 14. So they get three, certainly hoping for six after a 13-play drive. So you console yourself on defense by saying you did your job, right? If they go 13 plays, you only give up a field goal. You did a nice job there. But here's the other part. 13 plays, you don't force any mistakes. You don't take the ball away. Maybe that's the way they should look at it. Field goal, Zerline back out there now to send this one away. This is taken at the three. And he'll take this across the 25. A couple extra yards up to the 27-yard line. And now Indianapolis set to take the field. And down on the scoreboard, certainly needing to avoid what happened on the last drive, punting the football. Sense of urgency has to take over for them here. They know the score. They know the situation. And by the way, the punter no longer exists for their <laughs> offense. That's how they have to treat this drive. They need points. Big time. We're set on first down. He's got his target. That's Zach Pascal. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. A 14-yard gain for Indianapolis and also move the sticks. When you're struggling on offense, you're looking for anything possible to get you going. Sometimes you do it like basketball teams that don't normally press. You put a press on, bring people to life, make them move a little bit quicker. Maybe that'll help them as they head towards the half. Here's a throw to his running back. It's complete. And they'll get to him after a gain of seven to the 47. And just in general, Charles, on a play like that, how tough is it for the defense to account for a running back essentially being a receiver downfield? It's very difficult, especially if the running back has skills like a receiver, and you're aware of that before the game even begins. So throughout your practice sessions, you're going to want to be aware of him. Where is he lining up? What can he do? What kind of damage can he do to us downfield? And who can match up with him without weakening our overall defense? You're exactly right. It's a tough task to match up to him. It certainly looked like maybe his third or his fourth read on his progression. Just trying to find his outlet man that time. Ends up leading him just a bit too much. The Colts on third down. Two for five to this point. This time it's third and three. Brissett again. It's caught by Funches. Third catch of this first half for him, and this one is a first down. And Brandon, from our time in college football, where receivers weren't running the traditional NFL route tree, one thing they did learn, find open areas, find soft spots, and set up and catch the ball. And I think we just saw that there. Yeah, we saw that indeed, picking up the first. So from Rams territory now, it's first and 10 at the 48-yard line. This is Mack on the counter. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. A gain of 11 that time and a Colts first down. I'm okay with the call there. In fact, I actually like it. I know they're down a couple of scores, but the running game worked in that situation. I would continue to go in that direction. Yeah. 
So from the 36 now, first and 10. Hey, tight, tight down, tight down. There you go. Now a carry from Mack. And they'll get eight out of this before being stopped at the 28. That's a strong pickup right there on first down. And as this drive goes on, we're seeing an offensive line and running game imposing its will. Eight yards the gain on that last run. Here's second and a couple. Only a yard there on the keeper, and that's going to leave them with a third down. Well, they had that one sniffed out. Excellent run blitz. Stopped that one for a short gain. What makes a good run blitz a good run blitz? The ability to stay on task, to follow up your assignment, go to the gap you're supposed to cover, and not be deterred by anything else. A third field goal of the first half, not what they're looking for as they come up on third down. Brissett, blitz coming. And down he goes. Marching in for the sack, Michael Brockers. I'm starting to feel for that quarterback back there. I mean, you know me. Normally, don't have a lot of empathy for the QB, right? In this case, definitely. He's been on constant duress this entire game. I don't know how he's surviving back there. And to think, there's still a long way to go in this football game. So now here comes the field goal team for the third time today. This one from 48 yards away. And Vinatieri's kick is good. And that will get the disadvantage now back down to 11. So as it turns out, that sack doesn't wind up costing them, Charles. They at least get points, get three of them. Yeah, that's where your kicker can really come to your rescue because you know after the sack, there was a little consternation there. Are we out of field goal range? Are we going to be able to get three? In this case, he stepped right up and gave them exactly what they needed. the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. This fielded at the two. And he'll take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. Jared Goff and the Rams headed back onto the field. And he's been good. Two first-half touchdown passes, no interceptions so far. Does a lot for your confidence. Does a great deal for your team. Gives them a lead, and they're feeling really good about how they're playing. I think he expects to throw at least another one. I was going to say, now he wants the first half hat trick, doesn't he? Oh, without a doubt. Go ahead and fling him on the field, folks. He wants that type of celebration. Right. Golf will lead the Rams up here first and 10 at their own 28-yard line. A shotgun snap for Golf. And the throw left sideline here is caught, but they'll rule it incomplete. Couldn't keep his feet in. Second down. Second quarter action with 1.59 remaining. So a challenge coming down from the booth, and that's where these challenges come from, of course, in the final two minutes of the half. Yeah, and now we're going to New York, right? That's command central for the officials. They'll talk, they'll take a look at it, communicate with the referee at the game site, and issue a final decision because they do have the final call now. This the challenge was initiated by the guys in New York taking a look at the play. Less than two minutes to go. Yeah, I'm sure the coach wanted to challenge it, so he's probably going to send the New York office a holiday card. Coming up at halftime in a little less than two minutes, we'll send you to Orlando where Jonathan Coachman is standing by. He'll have highlights and analysis of this first half. Now this one complete downfield on the left side. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. 16 yards is the pickup there and a first down for L.A. 
And now with that completion, he's north of 200 yards here in the first half. And he's going to break our statistician, Marvin, isn't he? Because <laughs> Marvin right now is just tallying it up. Hope his hand doesn't hurt too much doing this or keeps hitting the calculator. But my goodness, what a start he is off to. By the end of this game, he could have monster numbers. He just wants to continue to be accurate. On first down, gone. An incomplete crisis averted. Almost picked. Instead, second down. Oh, man, that was close. The opportunity to change momentum, big play, right in his hands, unable to come down with it. A sigh of relief, no doubt, on offense that that fell harmlessly to the ground. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and 10. Goff now to throw. That's complete to his tight end, Higby. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. He wasn't ready. He wasn't ready. That's a staple of this offense, drag route to the tight end. Yeah, he's unable to use his size to break off much more yardage after the catch, but still an effective gain nonetheless. They face a third and four after that last completion gets them six. On the draw, Goff gives to Gurley. And they'll work this down to the 40-yard line, tackled there. The Rams going to go ahead and use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with exactly a minute to go before halftime. So on the heels of the run by Todd Gurley, another first and ten. I'm going back to you. Now Goff. And he's going to be taken down. Goff is sacked. Now the Rams will signal for a timeout their second as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. Sacks, a growing theme in this first half. This is second and long. To throw is gone. They'll throw underneath for Gurley. Seventh play of this drive coming up, but a long way to go on third down. From the gun, here's gone. And oh, he coughed it up, and the Colts pick it up, and they will take over at the 29-yard line. Well, he did what he's known for. He made the catch, then he turned into a runner, took the contact, and coughed it up. And all I remember as a player, when they catch the ball, when those acrobatic guys catch it, you have to make them pay sometimes. You have to put it on them, big tackle, knock the ball free, anything you can do to slow them down. Here comes the Indianapolis offense now as they get set to take over. You've got less than 30 seconds left here in the half. You're well on your own side of the field. What are we doing here, Coach Davis? Well, I'm trying something on first down. And it's something that's safe. It's something that's been done many times before. A lot of people say it's not even worth trying, but I'm running a draw. I'm running a screen. I'm seeing if something pops. And if it does, that can alter my strategy and potentially get me some points. And if it doesn't work, well, then you just run the clock out and go to the locker room. Less two minutes to go in the game, which means that this challenge was initiated by the fellows in New York. And if you're the coach, you're thinking, thank you, New York. Now a timeout signaled for, and they'll get it with 10 seconds to go before halftime. After review of the play, the ruling on the field is reversed. 
So even though it's first down, here's the field goal unit on now to try to get three before halftime. From the right hash, this from 45 yards away. And his kick is absolutely perfect. And that will get the lead up to 14. So a big play before the end of the half to get him into this spot, and they cash in with three. How about the one-two to the solar plexus on that one? The big play, the field goal, not much time left on the clock. That's the way to go into the half. Zerline back out there now to send this one away. This will be taken in at the one. And he'll be brought down at the 23, make it the 24-yard line. The Colts come to the line, ready to start their next drive. Time here for likely one play, then off to the locker room, and they're going to have some adjustments to make. They certainly will, and I think a lot of people are thinking to themselves, all right, take the knee, get out of here, regroup. But how will the head coach and his staff approach halftime? Will it be angry? Will it be clinical? Will they be calm? Will they just let it all out? Who knows? I'd love to be a fly on the wall for this one, though. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. And welcome in, everyone, to an abbreviated version of the EA Sports Halftime Report. This one has certainly been one-sided to this point. It's a two-touchdown difference as the teams have already come back out onto the field for the second half. So let's get you back out as well to Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And a pretty good return here. He'll be stopped just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. Out come the Colts. They'll have it first here to start quarter number three. They have the ball here for the inaugural drive of the second half. Pretty big deficit, though. We'll see what adjustments were made in that locker room. And I never want to make something more important than it actually is, right? I don't want to create more hype than what is there. But, but this you're going to do that? I'm doing it, though. <laughs> this is a really important drive. And we often talk about teams scripting plays to start a game. A lot of them script to start the second half, too. And they're scripting something that they expect to get them into the end zone and back into this game. We'll see if that script is a good one for them. A little bit of space there for the first down run as that's going to get them about five yards. Corey Littleton there on the tackle. I call that play a success. A nice inside run sets up a very manageable second down, a very solid gain on that play. The first down run got five. Here's second and five. Here's Brissett. Funches has it complete. That one, a first down pickup of eight. People worry about throwing the out route because often it can get jumped and that can turn into an either an incompletion or an interception. But not on that one. Everything came together and he catches it and goes over the sideline. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Off the play fake, here's Brissett. Looking deep for Hilton. That's caught inside the 20. And great yardage here all the way deep into Los Angeles territory. 
Back in the first quarter, you said it. They need to avoid the big play, but he just got a big one right there. He can't relax. You know, we talked about in the first quarter, but as the game progresses, still opportunities, and he took advantage of one there. So after the big play, look at this, all the way down at the 15 now on first and 10. From the red zone now, Brissett. This will be caught just inside the 10. And he's able to work it here to the eight yard line. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. Now that's staying ahead of the chains. Really good pickup on first down, hitting the tight end there. Now it brings up a second and manageable. Just found a hole in that zone. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. And of the air once more, it's Brissett. And this will be incomplete. That pass just a little bit off. It looked like maybe he tried to force it in there. Game speed, always different, no matter what you do in practice. Can't simulate it, right? So your decision-making, everything has to be a little bit quicker. Sometimes it can throw you off until you adjust. So the incomplete pass on the last play, and that leads us to a third and three. Again, it's Brissett. This will be caught at about the six. And he'll get into the end zone. Touchdown, Indianapolis. From eight yards out, as his guys are back within a single score. That's the score you felt they had to have here in the third quarter to get back in this game. And you know that there's an emphasis on their side. Hey, we know this. We know where we are. But sometimes that binds you up so much that you try too hard, you don't get the score. A perfect combination of urgency, yet relaxed enough to get it done. Now Adam Vinatieri for the point after. And that'll cut the lead down now to a touchdown. A drive that time of six plays. And the result for the Colts is a touchdown. This game back with it, a touchdown now as the kickoff's away. Fielded about a yard deep. And all that worked, but he stopped where he ultimately would have been, and he's simply taken a knee, and that's the 25-yard line. Out come the Rams. They'll have it first here to begin the third quarter. And they split the uprights last time for three. They've got the lead. They're not going to play this conservative. They're, they're not hoping for another field goal. They're hoping for a touchdown. I'm with you on that one. I like where your head is. I like the way you're thinking because you're exactly right. Trying to sit on a lead and play that way, that doesn't work too well for most teams. Run your offense. Yeah, Run what you do best. On the gas. Exactly. Put it all the way down and try to increase your lead in a big way. And the best way to do it, touchdowns on first and ten golf he gets it to cooks and he'll be upended at the 28 yard line just a three yard gain there well if you do read man coverage brandon the drag route's a pretty good one to run against it because you're running away from people on it here's second and seven now from the 28 Now it's gone. They'll find Everett there, complete. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. Not a big window to throw. Coverage wasn't too bad there. Yeah, they had him under wraps pretty well, but somehow able to muscle his way open and catch the ball. Here we go. By 20. Third and two, gone. Man open, it's Cup. he's got it. 
And he gets this up across the 35 before he's out of bounds. Subsequent gains of three, four, and now five yards. Good enough for the first down. All that practice time came to fruition on that play. All those timing routes that they work on through training camp, OTAs, mini camp, and just regular season, they got it done on that one. An out cut, ball was delivered, and picked up the completion. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Goff throwing again. And well, that's complete to Cooks. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. It's a Rams first down on a pickup of 10. Never make the mistake that the slot receivers, especially the little guys like we're watching here, are just quicker than fast. A lot of them combine quickness and speed, and they catch a lot of footballs as we just saw there. Goff in the offense with a first and 10, and he's four for four now, throwing the ball to start the drive. Goff's throw here finds Woods, and they get to him after a gain of six to the 46. And there they went crossing route against the zone defense. What do you think of that? Takes real coordination between the passer and the receiver because you've got to read those zones and where the open spots are and be on the same page with the guy throwing the football. Because sometimes you're throwing it in front of the zone. Sometimes you're throwing it between the zone. Sometimes the receiver's going to just kind of find a spot and what we call. And he's going to go down. They sack him back at the 42. Danico Autry picks up his second sack of the afternoon. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. After the sack, the Rams now set up with a tough one, a third and long. Out of the gun, gone. This is caught, it's Cooks. And they'll get him to the ground. He has another first down at the Colts 34-yard line. with a first and 10. And he's hit on all six of his throws on this drive. Here comes carry number 10 for Gurley. He's brought down there by Kenny Moore. Nice job by that defensive front there to hold him to a short gain on first down. Well played, I must say. Yeah, only getting one yard. There was no room to run. Again, they run with Gurley looking to find a lane, but he can't rein in at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there, so that doesn't help. Now they're looking up at a third and nine situation. Play number nine on the drive coming up, and they need nine yards on third down. Here's Goff. And he's got the hook up here. It's Woods. And he'll be stopped short of the first down as they rally to tackle him at about the 28. The completion good for only six, and that'll bring up fourth. One of the money routes for any offense, the drag route. So tough to defend because the receiver can stop at any point and make himself available to the quarterback and get a completion. But I love the communication we saw there. All the defenders pointing out the receiver, where he was going, and then they're able to rally to the ball after the catch and stop him short of a first down. And this is right down the middle as he puts it through. And that will push the lead up to double digits now at 10. 
So make him four out of four now in the field goal department, and he's able to extend their lead. When drives are bogged down, he's been automatic out there. So nice to have a kicker you can count on to put points on the board. Field goal, Zerline back out there now to send this one away. This is taken at the three. And he'll make it across the 20 as his guys will set up shot at the 23-yard line. And now Indianapolis set to take the field. And I guess they have to feel a little gratified to at least get on the board last time, but still work to do. No doubt about it. I wonder now if they're going to try to increase the urgency a little bit, maybe pump up the pace, maybe go two-minute. Who knows? Let's see what they decide to do. down they'll start out with Mack and not much there maybe a yard up in the 24 I if they want to start getting back into this game it behooves them to get better on first down yeah certainly not what they were looking for there out of the opening play of this drive they go right back to Mack it's a four-yard pick up there, and it leaves him with third and five. Well, if you're a football guy, that's a pretty run because everyone is in sync right there. Obviously, the guy carrying the ball, but how about the people up front? Leverage, athleticism, they created some nice space for him. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Out of the gun, Brissett. Trying to get it to Ebron, and it's intercepted. Picked up by Nikel Roby Coleman, and they will set up shop in enemy territory at the 42-yard line. That was a really nice interception. I think it illustrates the differences between playing man and playing zone. When you're in man, all you're focused on is the receiver in front of you. But when you're in zone, you're allowed to read the quarterback's eyes and go to the ball. That's exactly what happened on that play. Brandon Cooks and the rest of the offensive crew trotting back into place out there. And he is just one reception away from 10 in this game. I, I don't know what they need to do defensively, but something has to be altered, does it not? I know that whenever we tried to cover a person who's having a game like this, you're trying to vary what you're doing, trying to change things up, hoping to fool him occasionally. If not fool him, fool the quarterback so that maybe he doesn't read the coverage correctly. Right now, though, they're in pretty good sync. After the interception, here's Goff. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. It's a lot of contact going on there. And in the end, unable to keep two hands on the football and bring it into his body. Everything looked pretty good until the finish. Ball on the 42 as they come up second and 10. He's going to dump it off to Gurley. It's a gain of five on the play, and that'll lead here to a third down. play on the completion got him half of what they needed now here's a tough third and five golf now looking to throw oh incomplete nearly the pick they needed they would have loved one there but at least it does get him to fourth down he's lucky to be getting that one back after what they've done with him all day long with all the targets trying to go after him he's obviously gotten smart and his pride has kicked in made a terrific play 
Now it's Zerline to try the Ram field goal. This from 54 yards away. And that is no good. And this score will stay right where it is. Well, this winds up an empty possession. Everything looked okay. He just never got the ball on target. And knowing him, he'll be disappointed with that effort. Here comes the Indianapolis offense now as they get set to take over. And following the interception, just any interception, are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive or no? You just throw that out the window. I think you are. I don't think that there's any way you can run back out there and go, ah, totally didn't affect me. Let's just go ahead and be loose with the football again. You're going to take care of it, but you have to be careful about being too cautious because now you can't run any offense mm -hmm. at all. Still want to attack. We'll see how they attack them here. So after the missed long field goal attempt, this offense set up nicely at the 44-yard line. And he's going to take this one across midfield and into Ram territory. Just what you want on a first down run. Call it eight yards, and it's second and two. There's so many definitions of a complete back. I think most people think a guy who can block, a guy who can catch, and a guy who can run. But how about when you put it all together as a runner, and you can fake people out, you can be shifty, and also run with some power and break tackles, as we just saw on that pickup. Now the pass finding its way into the hands of Eric Ebron. And past the 35, he'll be dropped a yard or two shy of the 30. It'll be a gain of 17 and an Indianapolis first down. I don't know whether I want to be a fly on the wall or not when they hear the explanation of how he, one of the bigger targets on the field, the tight end could be that wide open and uncovered downfield. Who blew that assignment? Somebody did. No doubt about it. There's no way you're not going to account for him. Reset now, perfect since the second half started. Seven of seven, it's first and 10. To throw, Brissett taken in by the tight end, Doyle. He'll be dropped at the 25 after a gain of six. I know exactly what's going to be said about that play from the defensive perspective. What's that? That's why I tell all you guys we need more than one tackler to the ball. He broke the first tackle. Luckily enough, there were more people there to get him down. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. Brissett. They'll try and set up the screen to Hines. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. A 14-yard gain for Indianapolis and also move the sticks. When you run a screen pass really well, you got to like the look of it because so many parts come together to make it work well. The offensive linemen where they're faking people out, the back slipping out there, catching the football, then all of them going together as one unit downfield. A really nice pickup. On first down, Mack. And he'll be brought down this time at the five-yard line. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. And there's a run to be happy with. Good, solid yardage. He'll take that any time you hand the ball to a back. Naeem Hines, his first carry. And he's going to get him about three yards closer. He's down to about the two. So a decent deficit at this stage in the second half. Four down territory? No doubt about it. There's not a chance that he hasn't looked ahead and said, OK, if we gain yardage on this play, this is what we'll do going forward. If we lose yardage, this is the play call that I'll have ready. On third and one, here's Brissett. And that is caught. Touchdown, Indianapolis. Naeem Hines there to make the grab. As they are now just an extra point away from making this a three-point game. Well, it was third and one. I was expecting run so much for that. They pass it, they score it. That had the feel of the head coach telling the offensive coordinator, you've got four downs here. We're going to go for it on fourth down unless there's a disaster on third. Go ahead and take a shot if you want to. And he gratefully accepted the opportunity and did exactly that. If they didn't get it there, that had the feel that they would come back and try it on fourth down. Finitary able to tack on the PAT. And the lead is down to a field goal. So that drives seven plays in length. And it culminates in an Indianapolis touchdown.
So just a three-point game now as they send this one away. This will be taken in at the one. They'll bring it back to just about the 25, call it the 24-yard line. Getting set to go again here on offense, Jared Goff trots back onto the field. He's played well, good first half. He's continued that here in the third quarter. But my question, when you're a head coach, what do you look at stat line-wise for your court? Do you go right to turnovers? You really do. As much as coaches don't want to talk about that, that's where it starts. When I played in college, our first rule for every game, the team making the fewest mistakes will win. And that's kind of how they judge you. Do you take care of the ball, not turn it over, keep it in the proper hands, and give your team a chance to win? Well, that's what he's done here in this one so far. And he'll get to the 29-yard line brought down there. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. They'd love to just strike back with a touchdown right here, and if it's a long play, so be it. But the main goal, get a couple of first downs, run some plays, run some clock, allow their defense to get a chance to catch their breath, settle down, and relax a little bit after they just gave up the score. Looking to throw again on second down. Goff, he's gonna float this one deep right side. He's got it, hit the 15. And he'll be taken down, but first he gets deep into Indianapolis territory. Excellent execution, and now they're set up nicely. Are they ever? Red zone? I wonder what the next play call is going to be, because after a big play like that, a lot of teams like to use the momentum to launch another one. So on the other side of the field now, it's first and 10 as they've got things rolling on this drive. And now lose yardage here, knocked back to the 19-yard line. A good response by the defense, sending them backwards after that huge gain last play. Well, I know it goes against the instincts of the person catching the ball because all you're ever taught is catch the football, don't drop it. But drop it there. Yeah, in that situation, <laughs> dropping it would have been better. End up losing yardage, even though they completed the pass. As good as a sack. Yeah, how about that? Although they won't get the same credit for it, and it won't help them at contract time. A play fake to Gurley, now gone. And Woods has it complete. And all the way down inside the five to the four. Goff hitting Woods for a Rams first. Shotgun snap for gone. He's got it. It's Higby. Touchdown Rams. Jared Goff with his third touchdown pass of the afternoon. And the Rams tack on to their advantage. And man, Charles, talk about zinging something in there. Those gloves, they help with one-handed catches, the fun stuff. Any padding for a rocket like that? One would think so, but I'll guarantee you this, after that throw, his hands will hurt later. Not right now in the moment. He's just feeling good about catching it. Yeah, a little stinger, but a touchdown. Zerline now for the PAT. And his guys will take a 10-point lead. So that drive spanned five plays. And the result for the Rams, a touchdown.
Now after the touchdown, it's Zerline. He'll kick it away. This is taken at the three. And he'll take this across the 25. Couple extra yards up to the 27 yard line. And now Indianapolis set to take the field. And they're hoping to redo their efforts in the last drive when they got into the end zone. And just think of what it's like now on the sideline because when you score a touchdown, you have to go over and look at the tablet and see what you did on the last drive. When you scored points, it's a whole lot better view than when you're trying to figure out how to fix things there. Start on the ground with Hines. And he's going to lose yards. They take him down at the 26. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. But these guys are going to chop into that deficit. They got to do a much better job in the run game. Caught behind the line of scrimmage, no yardage would be found. A loss of a yard there to start out. That leads to a second and 11. On second down, here's a run with Mack. He gets them a little over half of what they needed. Now they're looking at a third and five. On a second and long, it's really nice to see an offense that has enough confidence to run the football in that situation. I think that goes back to their practice and game planning. They've seen things that they've seen on tape and in previous games that led them to believe that even in a long distance situation, they can still run the football and gain enough yardage to put themselves in a good spot on third down. The Colts on third down. They've hit on half of them, five for 10. This will be third and five. Brissett sets to throw it. They'll find Hines out of the backfield. And boy, he is very close to a first down, but from where they're spotting that football, he's gonna be a foot or so short. If this were baseball, we'd call this small ball. Instead of pushing it downfield, they throw a short pass trying to pick up the first down, but the defense rallies to the football and stops him short, bringing up a fourth down. Now here's Rigoberto Sanchez as he'll kick it away for the second time. And a great job here. This is gonna turn out to be a beauty. This is marked down at about the three yard line. That is how you flip field position. That's an absolute bomb of a punt. Downs it inside the five yard line, absolutely ideal. From that position, you're hoping to get it down inside the 15, inside the five, superb. Getting set to go again here, Robert Woods marches back onto the field. They have to like what they've gotten from him in this game. Think about the accumulation of catches. Eight. The yards per catch now, because you're getting more than a first down every time he's touching the ball. This is the kind of game you want when you're able to throw it out wide. Absolutely, over 100 yards, has the eight catches. They'll try and start the drive with Gurley. And he's upended at the six as they double their room to maneuver on a pickup of three. Offensively with the lead, you want to run the ball, keep the clock going, but you also want to still kind of be in attack mode too, right? So how do you do that and not come back on your heels? Yeah, think about all the practices we've watched where they had that tempo period to go over things just like this, where they describe the scenario, tell you what they're looking for, and make sure that they're still attacking, yet at the same time not going so fast as to leave too much time on the clock. It's a Rams first down on a pickup of 10. Another nice pickup through the air, and I think a lot of people might expect them to run the ball in this situation, Brandon, but with this lead, they're electing to throw the football. Swings, slants, quick outs, things that they consider safe. So that last play gives them a little more space now. Here's first and 10 at the 16-yard line. Gurley. And he 
he's taken down, but not before he gets this across the 25-yard line. A gain there of 12 yards and a first down L.A. Do my eyes deceive me, or is he getting stronger as this game moves along? Burst seems just as good here in the fourth as it was way back in the first, doesn't it? I do believe someone put a lot of time in in the offseason and continues to condition during the season in order to continue to carry the ball at this rate. Now Goff on first down. And that will be incomplete. Would have been a big hitter if they had connected. Instead, it's second down. Finally, a good play there defensively on the deep ball. The secondary has had its struggles this entire game. Offensively, they've had their way with them. So now they'll come up on second and 10, once again from the 28. Now it's Gurley. Nine yards on the pickup there as he'll be left with third and one. Yeah, another good run there. He's been such a big part of their success here this afternoon. And that last carry, it puts him over 100 yards now for the day. The Rams on third down. Well, they've converted seven times and could use another right now. They need just a yard here. It's third and one. Now Goff. He gets it to Gurley, complete. He needed a yard, that's what he got, and it's going to earn him a new set of downs. And that pickup of a first down, that's going to leave a mark because they really needed to stop them there, didn't they? That's so frustrating. Defensively, you're a play away from getting that football back here down late. Tough. Now they've got to find a way to create a turnover or takeaway. Otherwise, this one will probably get away from them. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. From the gun, here's Gaul. Dumps it off to Gurley. And getting this chest shy of midfield, they'll spot it at the 49. A gain there of 12 yards and a first down L.A. These guys are running offense like you drive. The pedal is down, stomp down. How about that? Back-to-back -back completions. They are rolling. So much for being conservative and running that football. It's Brown, and he's going to take this one across midfield and into Colts territory. Marcus Hunt able to take him down. Starting to become a tough spot for this defense. You're down fourth quarter, looking a little fatigued maybe on that side of the ball. Partner, we've seen this before, haven't we? Because every coach we've ever talked to says body language is important. And now you're seeing guys with their hands on their hips, they're bent over, hands on their knees. And the offensive guys are just saying, let's just keep running it out, and we've got them now. And he's going to have to protect the football and take his lumps here at this stage of the game as they stop him behind the line. Brandon, it's clearly a running situation when you're up in the fourth quarter. They're going to have to stack the box and make it difficult for them to move the ball. Made it very difficult right there, and now they need to repeat that effort. Yeah, bring seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take to slow them down. Out of the huddle now for play number nine on this drive. This is third down and eight. They go play action with Gurley. Now Goff. They'll get this one to Cup complete. And they'll get him to the ground. He has another first down at the Colts 23. He's played a great game. It continues right there, even with this lead, confident to throw the pass and have the reception made. There's no doubt who the leader of their team is, is there? There's no doubt who they want to ride all the way to the finish because strategy would tell you run the football, run the clock down. Instead, they're letting him throw it because they feel that confident in what he's getting done. Here we go tonight. Like 20. Pick it up. Back to the workhorse today. It's Gurley. And for one of the few times here today, this run's not going to go anywhere. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. 
He's having a big game running the football, but that one will hurt the yards per carry a little bit. Yeah, but the average he's got so far, that's the type of average he wants to take with him to contract negotiations, doesn't he? They'll stick to the ground game with Gurley. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. A gain there of 12 yards and a first down L.A. Uh, he's still rumbling, isn't he? Still looking fresh in this one despite the heavy workload. But you and I both know, well-conditioned, and he did tell us that he thrives on being at his peak late in ball games. This is Brown on the draw play, and he will maneuver his way down to about the seven. A gain of three, second down. Well, no doubt here in the fourth quarter, this is a huge defensive series. Hey, they can read the scoreboard. They realize if they give up a field goal here, this game might be out of reach. They understand the stakes and are playing accordingly. Now a play fake, and it's gone. Got a man, it's Brown. And here he'll get it down to the seven. Call it a one-yard gain on the play, and that'll bring up a third down. So they need six yards here on third down. They're two for two on third down tries so far on this drive. Gone. Keeps himself upright. But he can't get away forever, and down he goes. Credit that sack to Jabal Shear. Like the footwork back there, and I thought he did a pretty good job of evading that first wave of players. Tried to buy a little extra time out of the pocket, but in the end, oh, that was a tough one. Yeah, winds up getting buried for the loss. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. From the left hash, this from 34. And Zerline's kick is good. And that will stretch the lead up to 13. So yet another field goal to end a drive. That has been a very common theme. He's now hit five of them in this game. Yeah, Brandon, as an offense, you hate that you've had to call on your kicker so often, but you have to love the fact that time and time again, he's come through. Field goal, Zerline back out there now to send this one away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Now the Colts offense gets ready to head back on the field. And with this deficit, you can't have too many more drives like the last drive where you had to punt it away. You know what I would tell my offense right here? The punter doesn't exist, guys. He doesn't even exist. He's not, He's not a team anymore. I just cut him, <laughs> all right? So you've got to go out and create some offense for us here and give us some points. No way does that guy get on the field on this drive. Uh, poor punter. Yeah, he, it, it wasn't his fault. But, so, hey, listen, if some, there's got to be casualties at times. We're trying to win a game. First down, Brissett. And nearly picked off. Surprising to see a defender of his caliber let it get away, but it does get away and it's second down. I guess they're in a situation now, fourth quarter, where they're forced to take some chances, but I don't know that that was the type of a chance you want to take. And that one could very easily have been intercepted. And if it does get picked off, that could possibly seal this one. On second down, Bouchette again. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Nikel Roby Coleman there defensively. Well, those two have hooked up for a touchdown once already in this game, that time unable to find the completion. Yeah, it just appeared they wanted to get him out into open space and try and get him the football. As you mentioned, unable to connect. 
The Colts on third down. They've converted five times in their many chances thus far. This is third and 10. Brissett now. That's complete to Hines out of the backfield. And he's going to be brought down short of the first at about the 31-yard line. All right, they're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. Now Brissett on fourth down. And he hits his tight end, Ebron. The time to pull out the stops is now, and they convert there on fourth down. Fourth quarter, every drive so critical, and you figure may only get one more shot after this, so a touchdown's imperative on this drive. It is, but you also have to think to yourself in play calling, don't hold anything back. Don't save it for the second touchdown. You got the first one for the second one to even matter. A couple of first downs on the drive already, as he'll go from the 47 now on first down. They'll throw again, Brissett. Now they set up the screen, that's complete. Seven yards there on the first down screen play. For a second there, I thought that might break big. Screen pass, looked like it was coming together, looked like there was an opening. Still, ended up with a solid game. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. Again, it's Brissett. That'll be caught by Rodgers. And the stop here will come at the 38-yard line. That one, a first down pickup of eight. One thing I can say pretty safely, that route is not called if you don't have a guy who can throw the ball and put some mustard on it. Because if you're going to lollipop it in the middle of the field, bad things usually happen. It takes a strong-armed guy who can rifle it in there, and they were able to successfully complete that one. Here's Brissett. They'll try and set up the screen. It's complete. And he'll be brought down, losing yardage back at the 40. Call it a loss of two on the play. And that'll make it second and 12. You know the key to a good screen pass is, don't you? But you're going to tell me, good blocking? Well, good blocking eventually. But first is good acting. You want to let the defenders go past you, leak out to whichever side or even in the middle where you want to set up the screen, and then you do your blocking. How about the read, though, by the defensive guys? They weren't fooled at all and actually ran with the lineman to where the play was and smothered it for a loss of yardage. Second and 12 after the first down pass play went backwards for two yards. And in the air once more, it's Brissett. And that is incomplete. A lot of force bearing down on him there. He could not hang on. It's third down. That would have been a great catch, but it's real difficult to hold on to it because it was contested all the way. Would have been a great play if he had been able to haul that one in. Ninth play of the drive coming up, and certainly not an easy one on third and long. Brissett again. Yeah, that one's going to be knocked away and incomplete. Nikel Roby Coleman there defensively. They went with the dive look that time on defense, just flooded the field with defensive backs, blanketed everyone, took away all the passing angles, thus the incompletion. And they're indeed going to go for it here on fourth down. So trailing here in the last quarter, let's see how this plays out. Brissett to throw for it on fourth. And he gets it to Funches complete. The time to pull out the stops is now, and they convert there on fourth down. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, you know, you're down two scores. I don't think you need to rush just yet, but you can't take your time either. Yeah, even if you don't want to commit to full two-minute offense, you have to up the tempo, up the urgency. Maybe you're starting to call two plays in a huddle each time you snap the ball. Watch the screen, watch the screen. Watch the screen. 
from the red zone now. Brissett throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. I'm going to need some help with this one. How did he miss it? Wide open in the end zone. He's not hurried. He's not hit. And somehow, incomplete? Yeah. What happened? During film study, that's one where he's just going to shake his head, not be able to believe it. Six points go by the wayside on that one. Throwing again, Brissett on second and ten. It's caught by Funches. And stopped a few yards shy of the goal line at the three. The passing game for the Colts finding its stride, another first down. I think a lot of people ask the same question all the time. Why do we see so many slants in the red zone? Well, the windows are tighter. Everything's more condensed. It has to be quicker, and you've got to deliver the ball on time. Your biggest worry? ball gets tipped in the air because if that happens then it's fair game for the defense first and goal and they got to be thinking a chance to get right back into this football game looking to run with Mack and he's going to get this back to the three yard line and no further they'll say no gain on the play and it'll be second and goal well, it's been the air game that's taken them down on this drive before they finally turned around and handed it off on the last play. And now they're looking for the big boys to get him in the end zone. Couldn't do it there. It'll be interesting to see. Offensive lines had to pass block a lot on this drive. Will they be able to revert and fire out and create some space in the run game? And down he goes on the pressure from the Rams defense. When you're this close to the goal line, you've got to expect pressure from the defense. So the ball's got to come out fast. Got to get out of his hands quicker. This has been a long drive. You got to figure a field goal would be a letdown. Can they convert now on third and goal? They run with Hines. And the stop will come inside the five at the four. Call it a gain of five, but still a decent ways from the end zone now on fourth and goal. Well, look at the clock. You're down two scores. You have to go for this, don't you? And they thought that as soon as they took over possession. It didn't matter where they were on the field. They were always going to be in four-down territory. Backed up in good situation. It didn't matter. So they've been preparing for that on their play sheet the entire time. Two minutes left to play in this football game here on EA Sports. So the Colts in possession of the football as we get your reset. They're looking at a fourth and goal here as they search for a late score. They go for it on fourth and goal, but that winds up incomplete. They're turned away on fourth and goal. And this Rams defense comes up with a goal line stand. Well, they had to take one final shot at the end zone, but now things are looking really bleak. And I agree with that totally. You had to take the shot if they did score. You know, whether you call it a miracle or not, you line up, onside kick, get the ball back, throw one more in the end zone, who knows? Had to take the chance, it just was unsuccessful. Completes it to Evans. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. What? Facing a second and two after that last catch, good for eight yards. Here's Gurley. 
They're going to snuff this play out behind the line. We have not seen that much today. Now the Colts going to burn the second of their timeouts as they'll talk it over here before what will be an important third down. going to suck the life right out of this crowd. Now the Colts will use their third and final timeout, and they'll be disappointed to have to burn one there after giving up the first down. They're not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and ten. Throwing now. Gone. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Danico Autry giving him once again his third sack of the afternoon. This offensive line flat out cannot handle this pass rush. We've seen it demonstrated time and time again to the tune of seven sacks in this game thus far. get some of this yardage back after the sack. Second and 19. There's gone. Open man is Higby, the tight end. It'll be a pickup of 15 as that'll lead to third down. Well, he flew past 200, 300, 400 yards. Now he's over 450 yards passing on the day. So what you're saying is oxygen for everyone catching the ball and trying to defend? Yeah, especially those guys trying to defend right now. No doubt. They've got to be a confused group because they haven't been able to defend him very well at all. And I think he just wants to keep firing. When you have that kind of a day, you're just locked in. Just keep calling those pass plays. So the L.A. Rams with a victory here, and they were spurred on by a strong performance in that fourth quarter as they held their opponents off the scoreboard. Everyone wants to pitch a shutout for the entire game, but when you throw one in the fourth quarter, that tells everyone that you're getting stronger and dominance is starting to take over, right? The way that you close, the way that you finish, that gets preached to you from the time you're playing Little League football all the way up through, and they closed them out with a big-time performance down the stretch. So that'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. With that, we say so long from Indy.